This is the Russian dynamite Masha Slamovich. Becca here. This is not America's sweetheart Davian. It's Billy Starks and the super fly guy Trayvon Jordan. This is the fly side fly Jalen Brandon. Hardcore princess Jules Malone. Hi there. This is the bubblegum princess Alexia Nicole. This is the Brazilian Wonder Woman Christy Jane. This is the baddest black belt Janai Kai. This is Kid Bandit. The smash hit Joel Bateman. This is Robin Renegade. Cody Hawk. Brutal Bob Evans. And you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. Okay. This is Sid Nguyen from Vietnam with Wrestling and With Entertainment. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show with Wrestling With Entertainment, the only audio experience on the web today. That trust the choice for interviewing all your favorite wrestlers every Tuesday and Wednesday on YouTube and Castbox, sponsored by Rogue Energy and Player One Coffee. I am, of course, your host, James J, and it is a great day for wrestling because we are wrestling with the Prince of Pro Wrestling, Sid Wynn. Hello, hello. How are you, Sid? Perfectly healthy, perfectly fine. Really, really to take this business on. Fantastic. And what do you have coming up um, show-wise, event-wise? Well, coming up, uh, maybe our show is in um, August, second week of August, because we uh, have to take a little hiatus from June to July to have a look at our business and let all the um, competitor, the comp- competitions events in our country run over in the summer so we can have a new run business in August. Okay, and Brooke, can we find uh, everything uh, said when on uh, social media? Oh yeah, you can find me anywhere on social media with just Sid Wing, you can search that. I don't think that people actually name themselves Sid Wing as a wrestler in in the world, actually. <laughs> so that's that for me, being original. Yes. Uh, and merchandise? Yes. Where can we find your merchandise? Oh, merchandise right now. Uh, we're we're only selling it. Uh, in Vietnam, I think, only through Shopee. Okay, that's my cat. Excuse <laughs> her. Uh, we can only find it in Shopee. It's an online shopping network in Vietnam. And it, I think it's only popular in Southeast Asia. So if you are in Southeast Asia, do take a look at my merchandise. Uh, and I'll put all the links to all your social media and um, your merchandise um, in the description of the video below, both on YouTube and CastBox. Um, they could simply click the link and they will be there. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, well, let's get into it. Uh, can you tell us about Vietnam for wrestling? Sure. So what? when do you want me to start? I mean, how, wherever you want to start. I mean, you're literally one of the fine, founding fathers of Vietnam Pro Wrestling. Yeah, you want me to start at the very beginning uh, of how we start with this whole thing? Do you want me to stop when, you know, you have questions or anything? I mean, yeah, wherever you want to start, I have questions about the beginning, the middle, and the end. <laughs> Sure, sure. Uh, I don't want to, you know, talk too much. It's your show. <laughs> Nobody's listening for me. They're here for you. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Sure. So, <laughs> Vietnam Pro Wrestling. Like, uh, let me ask you a question. In the West, what makes pro wrestlers want to become a pro wrestler? Um. I mean, depending on the individual, it's usually, you know, they saw it on TV. Yeah. But one thing's different from there to here is that you, you guys have, um, you know, an established 
uh, long tradition and history with pro wrestling. It is or it is American pro wrestling, as we call it in Vietnam. Right. So yeah, the entertainment thing. So when let's start at the beginning when wrestling first came into our country. That's around uh, the late nineties when. Uh, uh, Thai, a Thailand network had uh, WWE on their network, and we, oof, that that took us by storm. <laughs> and uh, the the young community there take up pro wrestling, just watching, mind you, just watching pro wrestling as something incredibly violent, but yet very entertaining. Forward to the 20s, the 2000s, yeah, the 2000s. That's where I kind of come in. I was uh, third grade at the time. Yeah, that took me by storm also. Incredibly entertaining, high action, that kind of thing in WWE. But then there was um, the, uh, I don't know if you guys have this uh, phase of your childhood that you suddenly realize that it's all an act right. and then you uh, yeah yeah you felt you felt like you were, was betrayed <laughs> and you stopped watching for a while <laughs> and that was me uh, and that that was a couple of years then when I was 15 I think ah. she, she bit me sorry <laughs> I think he has an opinion too. He wants to talk too. <laughs> yeah, when I was around 15 years old, uh, it was around the CM Punk era. Okay, so He's like 2011. Right now. Yeah, the 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 infamous promo, right? Yeah, the pipe bomb. Yep, the pipe bomb. That's what they call it. So that thing intrigues me because you know with a supposedly scripted entertainment business how can somebody has the balls to say what he said and what he said was really uh, between the lines of scripted and real for me and that really intrigued me at the time and it pulled me back Flash forward, 18, 18 years old, have this crazy idea that maybe, maybe I can actually have talent in this pro wrestling stuff. At the time, there was really nobody was doing it in Vietnam. I was lucky because only one week prior, uh, Rocky Hun, my co-founder and friend, Dear friend, uh, has established a group practicing pro wrestling via some uh, via YouTube uh, tutorials by um, How to Wrestle. Do you know that channel? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, How to Wrestle. Uh, some YouTube tutorial. He um, created a team practicing on Sunday morning because that's the only free day we have. Yeah, and I joined up. Uh, in the first stages, it's just us doing it by ourselves. And I'm going to sound really bad here because young people doing by doing wrestling, practicing wrestling by ourselves isn't really uh, benefit, you know, isn't really good. And it's not the, the, the way to go. It wasn't proper training, is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't proper training. We were bumping on boxing rings, doing the stuff without knowing the basics, the fundamentals, and the principles. So, a couple of months went by. It was just, you know, you know fun, young, fun, young people fun. Then um, he contacted two Japanese pro wrestler that 
was that had already invested in um, a training uh, wrestling school in Vietnam. Too bad that school didn't work out. But hey, uh, that that school is in Da Nang. Actually, it's in the middle of a country. Uh, we're in the south. That's in the middle. Okay. But uh, yeah, because you know Japanese and Vietnamese, they have a language barrier and other things, other complications. They didn't get any. Vietnamese uh, students, only like five guys that was from Southeast Asia, paid to go to train. Some of them are my colleagues around the regions now. But yeah, the company went bankrupt. They all head back to uh, Japan. But somehow we got in contact with those two. And they are generous enough to come train us. Do you believe that? So you trained in so, Japan uh, with, uh, with those two guys? Yeah. The, f- the things I trained with them was uh, just the basics, actually. Just the very, very basics. They, um, they emphasized, they emphasized on the, um, the importance of having, you know, conditioning, right. strength, agility, yeah, cardio. Then they uh, trained us in uh, the, the basic roles and the basic uh, chain locks. You know the four chain locks? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Head, head lock, waist lock, wrist lock, hammer lock, those kind of things. And then how to reverse out of them. Uh, but too bad. Uh, they take like... We had training with them only... Or four to five days in that period because they don't have um, a running business here but uh, they have to fly back to Japan and this was just like a little vacation for them okay yeah but we, we ran with it we ran with it for like a year a year or a year and a half just basic stuff and actually we, we were seeing some progress because you know proper training Pays off with the basic principles. And you are the uh, the head trainer of Vietnam Pro Wrestling, correct? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, how did you adapt your training? Because obviously, you were trained in the Japanese style and adapted to oh, Vietnam yeah. style. If there is a Vietnam style, it's uh, weird. You know, they are very traditional, and sometimes it's um, very rigid, and they stuck to their principles and traditions. Uh, so, um, but some some were not taught to me because language barrier, of course. Right. And time constraints. So after a year and year and a half. Uh, I took off to Singapore on my own, just alone. Uh, 2019, 2019, 20 years old, took off to Singapore alone for three to four days there because Singapore Pro Wrestling was the first company that uh, popped up in Southeast Asia. It was taught by a Western influence, a Western, um, uh, no, a Russian, yeah, Russian, a Russian teacher. He, he lives there now, actually. So I went there, trying, learning the best that I can in those three days. Enrich myself, then come back and teach. And those were the first steps. And yeah, from then, from that was 20, 2016, 17. Two years. In two years, we struggled and trained uh, with the Japanese and Western influence. No show yet, no. No show yet, though. <laughs> right. So, it 
kind of seems like you didn't just go out to seek one type of pro wrestler. You found all types out there, correct? Yeah, it, yeah, is you know you should be well off with more than one influence of knowledge because um, Japanese is good, but Western has its own style. If we can adapt those things, and then we have more options. Right. And it does seem like um, the Vietnam pro wrestling kind of takes more from uh, the Western rather than the Japanese style of pro wrestling. Would I be correct in saying that? Yes. Simply because um, Japanese pro wrestling was never broadcast in our national TVs and stuff. So, yeah, from that, so from that to compare to WWE, you know, it's worldwide. Everybody knows it, the Western style. Right. So it's easier to, to um, replicate that with the, the, the Vietnamese roster to, um, to, you know, edge in the, um, the general population. Because I think Jap Japanese pro wrestling is a market on its own and without certain rules and certain time to train because they do train rigorously. So without that, it would come off as really um, sloppy. So Western style is um, easier to replicate. Okay. So when does um, Rocky, you know, the other founder, come to you and say, we're bringing, we're going to do the first show in Vietnam? Yeah. So the, the idea of running shows to us was um, first experimented by me, by my idea of, I think, sorry, but it was really long and I have really bad memory <laughs> lately. No boy. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, it was 2017. 2017, we run like um, experimental shows, live, live event, match shows. Because we we don't have the money for the ring at the time, and we when we stop renting out the uh, boxing rings because it's you know fucking it was expensive as shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we start doing pro wrestling on mats, judo mats. We run shows on that, and the first crowd was twelve. Yeah, the first crowd was twelve. It was. Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, that kind of thing. 12 people, and the second show, 20. Yeah, so it was something that we know we can do, but haven't really invested in the, the location or the mattress and characters, lightings and whatnot, chairs, and it's just, we just have an open invite for them to come. We'll just... Yeah, open invite. So they come, 12, 20. So after that, and a couple more trips to Singapore. Oh, oh no, no, not, not, not yet, not yet. <laughs> after that, 2018. 2018 was when we first ran shows, match shows in the dance studio around the city uh, center district. And yeah, the first crowd was 80, 80, 90, 100, around that. And five, five matches, I think. Yeah, there was five matches. Five matches, 100 uh, people crowd. It was a really big success for Stepping Stone. And from that to now, we are doing regularly 350, close, closing to 400. And that's pretty really impressive for any 
new promotion to do, you know, for close to 400 people. Um, and you're in the eighth year of Vietnam Pro Wrestling. What does it mean to you to have, you know, the promotion reach eight years? Reach, reach what? Sorry? You're at eight, the eight year mark with the promotion. Yeah. What does it mean to you to have the promotion be eight years old? Ooh. Well, we're closing on uh, 10 years of doing this. So it is a benchmark to look back. Uh, I'm 26 now. So a couple more years and it'd be a third of my life dedicating to this. Uh, no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's really amazing that I was lucky, yeah, I said lucky, very lucky enough to find myself in this crowd of people, in this roster of wrestlers, the like-minded, um, passionate young, young adults like myself to actually try our best to do pro wrestling. Because it's not making us any more money. You know, it's only very relatively low. But to see this, to see the, 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 entertain, the entertainment value that we generate for our fans, each show, like that is just uh, priceless. We cannot replace it. At the beginning, um, you didn't wrestle uh, in an actual wrestling ring. You actually wrestled on uh, mats. Um, yeah. What? How do you kind of start a pro wrestling promotion without a ring? <laughs> how do How do you approach that differently? Because obviously, you know, you had ring training before that. Yeah. So. The first hard thing, right, that we need to um, find people that can overlook overlook the fact that wrestling should be done in a ring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there, there, there's always, you know, the general public already uh, has an image inside them that WWE has their ring. So pro wrestling is done inside a ring. So to get to get around that is really, you know, difficult and challenging because, and we have to engage with our already established, growing wrestling enthusiast community here to 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 to, to pull them in to have a, you know a sort of foundation for us to actually build ourselves to having the enough funds for it. Uh, so yeah, get around that. That was the, the marketing and um, pulling in people. But as a um, standard match format, I think it isn't much different. Because if you know the basics, the basics of pro wrestling, right? Yeah. So it's about storytelling. It doesn't matter if you have a ring or not, right? Right. So we that with a mat, and we can tell con we can we can tell convincing stories, engaging stories. So that was our hook. We get our audience in at the first, uh, you know, their first time. You know, like a try, um, like a trial. Yeah, can uh, it, it didn't have. Sorry. Twisting my tongue here. Oh uh, they uh, what what's the word? Sorry, this is not my language. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand. Take your time. Jesus. Are you trying to say like they hadn't um some of the crowd didn't 
right now that wrestling could take could take place in a yeah. in a ring because yeah. you yeah. know a price a price at the the starting point was like cheap. So so it didn't didn't hurt them if they you know spend money for a show or two because it's very very cheap money. It's like uh uh one dollar one dollar no not one dollar around three three to four four bucks when when we're doing uh, match shows yeah three to four bucks for one ticket no so oh, with that yeah it doesn't it doesn't hurt them if they spend like three or four bucks to try something out in the weekends right right but then we hooked them in with our talent and our stories. So with that price and our level of you know performance, many many became uh, lifelong fans and they're still going to this day. And some even join in our roster from these uh, trial from these match shows. So it's, it was very fortunate. Now, when you did actually get a ring in Vietnam, I mean, obviously, you know, you wrestled in a ring before that, but what did it mean to you to actually have to wrestle in a ring in Vietnam? Yeah, it was... It was... Um, uh, big step up because the only time we get to wrestle in a ring was when we were booked overseas me and Rocky got booked overseas for Singapore were in uh, 2018 and him again in uh, 2019 yeah for China for China's middle king middle kingdom wrestling shout out for middle kingdom wrestling so those are the, the the only times that we get to we got to wrestle in the ring. Uh, so, but we keep having to spend to fix up our assets and stuff, right? So we don't have we can't accumulate enough money to actually get a ring and with the blueprints. So we pour fill a few relationships. With a few blueprints from Hong Kong, Singapore, for reference, and we have a uh, a, a foreign wrestler, a foreign Viet wrestler, that's Viva Vung. Shout out again, Viva Vung. Uh, yeah, she uh, she helped us by creating a uh, GoFund Go GoFundMe account. Yeah, yeah, GoFundMe account, and. The, get our stories out in the world and the people you know funded funded our ring that was and we get our first ring in 2020 well yeah 2020 remember the year because that was a bad year yeah Not, yeah it was a bad year 20. for everybody <laughs> Yeah, bad news for everybody. That was um, at first. Vietnam didn't get affected much. Only you know social distancing, that kind of shit. So we get a ring. We did one show, one show, one show with a real ring. <laughs> yeah, and the crowd was a hundred and eighty to uh, two hundred. But after that one show, COVID wave. The uh, second wave hit. Boom! Everything went to shit, and we have to store the ring up. Everybody go home, rest, do everything at home, work at home, can't go out. Yeah, everybody took a big, big hit. Well, uh, we were lucky that none, none of our wrestlers were really, you know, affected by uh, the pandemic much, aside from, you know. Not having to move. 
that then you know, we came out of the pandemic in 2021 Jesus Christ it's been a long time <laughs> that, yeah uh, I believe it was yeah, October you, of 2021 I think so yeah really <laughs> I don't remember so our first show back was from the ashes that was early 20 really wait let me let me check again can't remember yeah probably that but, you know sorry sorry to make you wait Jesus Christ, it's not good for business. <laughs> yes, that was 2021. One year ago. What? Oh. Ah, uh, no. That was 2021. We, had, we took a long time editing these things. Wait. 2021. Okay, 2021. Yeah. Uh, our first show was from the ashes. We still um, we run shows in um, studios, big fi big filming studios. Uh, the the crowd from two hundred at our first show became two fifty, then two eighty, then three hundred, then three fifty, and that has been the benchmark for us ever since. 350 people. Now, you mentioned you went into stu the studios. Uh, I'm assuming that was close. Uh, there was no people, um, no crowd for those shows? Oh, no. There, there were people. Okay. Okay. In, in the pandemic, we did two, two uh, no, no crowd shows. Okay. Because, you know, we had to wrestle can't run shows yet but you can actually go out did two shows uh, that was recorded at our training center center is a uh, big stretch because uh, the ring is at um, a mem two members house in a distant distant location uh, in the outskirts of the city so they have lands so we have you know, Dude, with their goodwill, we put the ring there and train there and record there. Two shows, but those two shows were were really, you know, not 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 good because without the crowd, oh, so bad. <laughs> right. It does seem like the uh, the Vietnam crowd is very responsive to the uh, the performance of your pro wrestling. Um, it definitely feels like that they are the third person in the ring, so to speak. Um, how was it kind of mean to you that you know this is the, maybe the first pro wrestling they've ever seen, and you're the one introducing it to them? Yeah, it was a certain difference between watching WWE on your TV, phone, laptop, then watching real pro wrestling, live by pro, by Viet, Vietnamese pro wrestlers. So that was our hook, just a live atmosphere, live audience, pure entertainment. You don't have to, you know, be a distant observer from a distant country watching another big name uh on the screen you get to be entertained by real vietnamese wrestlers and what do you want to know again sorry i just ramble oh no what i just wanted to know was you know what does it mean to you to be the thing that a lot of people you're the first pro wrestling uh, people from Vietnam will see. If they didn't see WWE, they saw you, Rocky, your promotion, and that was their gateway to, to pro wrestling. What does that mean to you? 
Yeah, it certainly was very fortunate. I just feel very fortunate that I get to do this, get to do what I love. Uh, you know, get to do what I love to the people that actually care. So, but you know, you always have to remind yourself that these things, you what what you're doing it for, who you're doing it for. We're doing it for for the crowd. We're not doing it for our ego. We do we're not doing it for the the the, the, the superstition, the superficial values of you know being champion or having many wins and that not that that's ego talk. You know, I'm doing this for for Vietnam wrestling in general. To, for for more kids like me that have this passion that now they can look at this and see oh you can actually do this. You know, we can ha actually have a pathway to something and we can contribute to that. And that's very, very fortunate. It feels very fortunate. And you were the first ever VPW Open Weight Champion. Uh, you were basically the first ever champion of Vietnam. What did that mean to you? Yes, the, yeah, you know, is this um, K Fape wise or non K Fape wise? However you want to, <laughs> however you want to answer sure, it. Sure. <laughs> okay, let, let, let me re uh, reinvigorate. So, being the first champion, being the first champion, like, like it proved to me that you know, I am, I am enough. Not enough, actually. I'm good enough. I'm actually good enough to be front and center and be a leading image because I struggle with this all the time struggle with you know feeling my own value and self-esteem so this thing sets up set up set me up at a position where I represent not just me but the entire promotion so it was a privilege but at the time I was you know Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Bless you. At the time, I was um, not, uh, not a really good guy. <laughs> Fuck. Bless you. Thank you. But, yeah. So, now I look back, I see that uh, there have been a bunch of other, you know, opportunities that I could have taken. Also, 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 one, 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 one uh, major thing involved that when I was <clears throat> champion first time, first champion ever, I was actually serving my military service. So I'm, I'm, I'm pulling triple duty here: champion, uni school, and military service. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So yeah, I can't go abroad. It's too bad that the belt didn't get defended outside of Vietnam, but I still get enough matches in, like uh, a decent three to four matches as champion. It's good enough, right? <laughs> I mean, you held the championship for 273 days, I, I believe? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's an impressive your... feat uh, and be the first ever champion. You know, when we look back on the pro wrestling in Vietnam, it's you. You're the first champion. So, I mean, yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely a feat, to say the least. Thank you. Now, now, speaking as a pro wrestler, so I get to my eighth year doing this. And you need to have a mindset, you know, to be a student of the game. You can never let the, the belt becomes a pinnacle 
and then you 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 you, you stay on that you, you just stay on that peak no you never stay on one place you need to grow so the belt for me was a phase so now I'm just really trying to perfect myself through all those years through all the injuries through my uh, training and uh, having to deal with life studying and all that kind of shit now I'm just trying to better myself every day to what and hone myself until one day can I actually become champion again now um, the person that beat you for that championship was Rocky um, yeah. would you say Rocky. Rocky is a good friend or a better enemy I mean enemy as like a, a, a competitive rival in the world uh, Rocky well Rocky is uh, an OG, an original, like me. So we have this, we have this mutual respect, and we're like-minded people, just different ways to do it. You know, I'm just, I'm just me. Rocky is Rocky. He's a goody two shoes, <laughs> shiny baby face does no wrong and I, I i went through my phases i went through the the the, the, the bitter phases the, the evil phases now just sell, settling in as being me the prince of wrestling so rocky was a you know i couldn't how do I say this? People are good. Our general, no, no, no. Our whole roster right now is a lot better than compared to two or three years before, right? Right. Uh, but um, on my level, there's only two, really, only only really two two uh, person that can actually be on my level, and Rocky is one of them. So he is a fantastic dance partner. We have great chemistry. Every match is a classic. You can watch it back from even the match shows to the ring shows. We ha I haven't faced him in a while because, you know, it's done. He has other things on his mind, occupied, and I have other things uh, I'm occupied. But yeah. We, 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 we're friends now, but eventually we'll face each other again because, you know, there cannot be two kings. <laughs> and I'm sure it's going to be um, interesting to see you match up against Rocky again in the future, considering that it, um, what he's learned and what you've learned since the last time you used class, you know? Yeah, would be very interesting. Who a lot heavier too. <laughs> <laughs> He's grown balder. Oh wow! Wait, maybe oh, you rock. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that match will come a little sooner than we expected. Oh hell yeah! As long as he's finished with that Aries of us. Now um. That's the match cards look uh, in August, and then we'll see. All right. Now, um, the promo you and the promotion was featured on um, HTV, um, which is a Vietnam uh, pro programming. How did that mm -hmm. come about, and what was that experience like to be on TV with the promotion? We, we have a couple of uh, appearances on TV, yes. you know, on a couple of yeah, entertainment shows. Some uh, One was in 2018, I think. 
that was when I having I was the the one carrying the belt. Is that what you're you're mentioning? Um, the one that I saw was um you were training um the the host how to pro wrestle. Hmm. So that was rude. No, no belt in sight, right? Um, it was a, it was quite a while to go. It was at least twenty twenty, I would say. Ah, uh, okay, twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, so that was another thing. Uh, we have our names with the, the the press and the channels here and there. One was twenty eighteen. That was twenty twenty. Now it was really um really fun to have us being you know have a chance to uh for that exposure sort of thing to the general public but uh one bad thing came though in the the, the with the um national t v twenty eighteen it's when I popped my shoulder Ooh. So did a show for them. Uh, that was our appearance. We did a short match to uh, sort of give them give them the a general idea what we were doing, right? So I did a drop kick, landed on my left side, and my arm was in a bad position. So pop, I can I can actually. Feel it and hear it. The little rotator cuff go or went, <laughs> and the, sh the the shoulder joint went. They were trying to uh, put it back. Then take uh, took uh, a back suplex and then boom, <laughs> gone. <laughs> yeah, it still haunts me to this day. This uh, left shoulder here. <clears throat> wow. Sorry. Oh, Oh, um. Yeah. So since then, now it's been five years, and I've been wrestling with one less shoulder for five years. <laughs> um, from my perspective, and I've only done the research. I've only seen what I've seen. Um, it seems like pro wrestling in Vietnam has been received very well. Um, there's been documentaries uh, being featured on TV, newspaper articles, web articles. Um, has it been all positive uh, from the Vietnam uh, mass uh, people, or have you reached some? Have you hit some walls when it comes to getting the people to come in? Mm. Okay, negative. Neg negativity, right? So, uh, negativity, I think, is expected everywhere, especially in our industry of entertainment. Okay. So, what since we first started till now, the journey has been, you know, ups and downs. But one thing has been a constant. That is the fucking negative and stupid comments that doesn't do any favors. So no constructive criticism, just bullshit talking about, oh, we're pretending to be WWE and that kind of shit. And just, just fucking lame. And through my time, I have learned to actually try to block it out, ignore it, because these people have uh, a lack of, you know, attention or love to themselves. So now they're compensating by lashing out at other people that are trying, actually doing something about the things they love. And so try to ignore them. I believe. But yeah, it, yeah, the only negativity we get. Is from the the the, 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 the ignorant uh, general public. Only that part. All the the rest of the the press and things are positive because we're doing it 
in a legit way. You know what I'm saying? What? Uh, the correct papers, licenses, doing it by the books, no, no fuck ups. Try to not have any more fuck ups. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, he said right away. Then I believe we called those people wrestling Twitter. Congratulations, you're part of the family. <laughs> Twitter, wrestling Twitter. You said you know the people that are that just bother the product without any constructive criticism. We call that in America wrestling Twitter. <laughs> Uh, can you spell it out? Um, just peop the the people that criticize the product. It's just yeah. Uh, we call it the, the uh, it's, it's their own their own community. It's their own people that bother uh, right. our community. It's weird, right? <laughs> right. Is the the ba basic premise is this: if you don't like it, don't watch it. Don't engage in it, right? Oh yeah. So, so you spend you're spending all this energy saying negative things to people you don't know, to the things you hate, for what? <laughs> I'm at the mindset of just enjoy pro wrestling. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Just. Uh, your time yeah. in, in Singapore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, can, what were you gonna say? No, 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 no. I was just saying that you, you, you talk, but then you come and I came, and it's, it's weird. Um. So I was going to ask. Oh, in your time, I believe it was in Singapore. You actually wrestled under a mask. No. Uh. No. I never put a mask on my face in the oh. official show before. Huh. Which show are you talking about? It was a uh, it's taco. Also, oh, yeah, there was in Singapore before us, right? That they, they did booked some some. Uh, some students of our uh, senseis, of our teachers, they were students of our teachers that, that um, they were Japanese that paid for the course, the training course, the, the wrestling course in Da Nang. So, sort of Vietnam, but not really Vietnamese. So, they take the name Saigon Gorilla and wear a mask with our, man, our flag on it. But they're not actually Vietnamese, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So they're Japanese, and they were two years uh, before us, I think. Yeah. Now, um, VPW was featured in Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Um, you know, obviously one of the biggest publications when it comes to pro wrestling, um, globally known. Um, and that was, uh, I believe last month. So what does it mean to you to have, uh, Vietnamese pro wrestling, um, recognized by one of the biggest pro wrestling magazines out there? It was a surprise for me because um, the, 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 the writer of the article didn't, uh, didn't tell me about him applying it for Wrestling Illustrated. So it was certainly a, a pleasant surprise. Uh, I'm speechless, man, because I never really imagine myself or us reaching that level at least not not yet not not here you know not not where we're what not 
not not that I'm at our position now. Like I have this ambitious idea of getting it to a thousand a thousand people crowd, two thousand people crowd to actually get some people to notice worldwide. But yeah, it was really a pleasant surprise and a certain uh, validation to all of our hard work in those seven and eight years. Great. Now, um, we always ask on the show, um, have you ever had a real crazy, bizarre encounter being in pro wrestling? A sense of uh, something that happened on the road, a road story. Do you have one of those? Hmm, on the road. I don't think we didn't get on the road. The last <laughs> time I was on the road was me flying to Singapore in 2018. So, not really. I'm not the at traveling level yet. I haven't got book. Still got school to finish. So it's, it's, it's really a, a bug, uh, a chain on my ankle, yeah. So no crazy uh, road stories quite yet? <laughs> not yet, not yet. <laughs> All right. Now I'll update you on the, when, we, when we, I actually have a crazy road story. Please do. <laughs> okay. um, now, let's say they're making a movie about you. Every movie has a soundtrack. What would be three songs that would be on the Sid Glenn uh, movie soundtrack? Oof. Songs, eh? <laughs> yes, music. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough, tough choice. Choices. To make I don't have a certain songs in my head, but the one that comes to mind, the first thing that comes to mind was uh, Centuries by uh, Fall Out Boy, you know? Yes, I do know that. It was my, yeah, my theme. It was my theme for the, the, the period I was wrestling on my shows. But now I don't, don't use it because copyright issues. <laughs> don't we all know that? <laughs> Yeah, fuck. The air is different. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Centuries by Fall Out Boy. Uh, maybe uh, not alike by Eminem. I'm, I'm a big Eminem fan. Huh? Sorry. Yeah, big rap fan since high school because, you know, just like how he rhymes and wordplay. So, not alike by uh, Eminem re recently. I think, I think, it feels recently, it's not 2000s Eminem, yeah, Murder Not Alike on uh, the Kamikaze album, yeah, on, on, only those two uh, pops up in my head, because one, uh, Centuries, the line, the, the, the hook was, remember me for centuries, so, that's my personal, personal little ambition. To live my name in history for centuries. And I mean, not like, yeah. I mean, you just, you gave me two, but you gave me two really good songs. Well. So I'm, I'm definitely happy with it. Thanks. Um. It was. Now, who's yeah, yeah. Oh, what was first? You talk, you talk. Yeah, no, 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 no. I just ran <laughs> You talk. Oh, no way. Um, now that we have the soundtrack, who would play Sid? And you can't say oh. yourself. <laughs> I have no idea, man. <laughs> really? Look, looking at it, you know, it's going to be a Vietnamese actor, right? It can't be a Westerner because the story would be different. <laughs> I mean, so, like, 
and the <laughs> air is passport play you if you want. It's your movie. <laughs> You're producing it. <laughs> Just a fun, a fun little. Uh, uh, fuck, what's the word? <laughs> a fun little speculation. And in uh, a different interpretation of your story. <laughs> so, anybody in particular, or would you let would you like uh, casting decide? I'll let the casting decide, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think of actors like wrestlers, right? So you you cannot have somebody do do uh, certain roles that they are not comfortable with or they can't do. You know, like like Robin Reigns doing the 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 the, the big dog segment when Baron Corbin dumped dog food on him. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was bad. So can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> Let them decide. Every movie has a supporting cast. Who would be three people in your movie? You don't. It doesn't have to be who plays them, but just three people personally that who would be in the movie. Hmm. One would be Rocky. Ah, oh, that bald bastard. <laughs> uh, Rocky, Rocky, and Rocky, my mother, and 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 and, 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 and. Who, 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 who else? Who else? Yeah, yeah. Just I think just those those two. The Booker should be no third because he he helps a lot. But uh, I'm only giving the supporting cast positive influence. So. It would be a very boring movie. <laughs> <laughs> Out of just my yeah, curiosity, do you have anybody in mind to play Rocky? Who is bald right now in Hollywood? Hmm. I mean, <laughs> we, we could shave anybody's head for, for a while. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, Not, 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 not Channing, not Channing Tatum. I'm, I'm, I'm being too serious. I'm actually brainstorming here. Mm-hmm. Let's just have Christian Bale, okay? <laughs> All right. We're blowing the budget put... on Christian Bale. <laughs> it sounds like put a great movie. Head it sounds like a great movie, and you could pre-order the ticket now. Right. Great. Support me, people. <laughs> yes. Um, on to a controversial subject. Pineapple on pizza. What's your stance? I'm not Italian, man, so I don't get the rights to judge. But I never liked pineapple separately. So it, the textures get weird in my tongue. So I never, never really liked pineapple. So not on anything. <laughs> so you're anti-pineapple altogether. Yeah, yeah period. period. Anti-pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a spirit Pokemon? A, a what? A, a Pokemon that you identify with. Pokemon? Oof, I, I, I don't follow Pokemon much. Uh, the, the only Pokemon I love was Charizard back in the day. All right, well, we love the OGs. Uh, weirdest question you'll be asked on a wrestling interview, hopefully. Um, would you consider wrestling a rock? Not Dwayne Johnson, not the country, an actual physical rock. Can you say that again? Would you ever consider wrestling a rock? You know, a stone? Uh huh. A rock? Yes. Would you wrestle one? 
The Rock, you mean? Yes. Wrestle The Rock? Not Dwayne Johnson. An actual rock. Alright, <laughs> I I mean, if you pays me well, I will. I will. <laughs> no. It makes it a damn good match, by the way. <laughs> well, um, just so you're aware, there's a press, uh, there's a wrestler named uh, Psycho Mike that wrestled an actual rock uh, in <laughs> an Iron Man match that lasted for two weeks. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yes. Seriously? That's what they're doing in Canada. <laughs> That's the pro wrestling they got over there. <laughs> well, they do they, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, on a more serious note, where do you see yourself in five years? Five years. Hopefully, Dragon Gate. Ooh. Hopefully, Dragon Gate, and then you know, other things, excursion to the US, UK, whatever, wherever, I'm ready. And what is a match uh, from yourself that people should go out of their way to see that shows off your pro wrestling? Matches? What? Uh, yeah. Just one? Um, you could draw a couple at me, if you want. Okay, uh, f me, Sid and Wing versus Andy, <clears throat> for, when was it, I, I, I fought him thrice, one was match shows, two was recently, uh, it was, yeah, fine, Sid and Wing versus Andy. Uh, of last year, because that was my favorite encounter with him. Can we find that on YouTube? Yeah, it's on YouTube. I can send you a link. Oh, wait. Oh. Wait. Let me check. Let me check. Okay, where is it? Okay, it's only highlights. I mean, I could put that in uh, that match in the description of the video below, uh, but on YouTube and Castbox. Um, and if you would like to send me a full length match from yourself um, as well, I would happily put that in the description as well. Thank you. But uh, yeah, we we're sorting out we're sorting out a few things in uh, VPW uh, about. Of matches, full matches, and highlights, that kind of thing. Right. And I mean, you have a couple of really good matches with Rocky on YouTube as well. Yeah. So watch that first. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, Google, uh, just type into YouTube, Sid, and his matches will come up, and just binge watch all of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. See the progress, people. <laughs> and uh, since, you the since we are nearing the conclusion of this interview, um, we are rest we are wrestling with the eight questions of doom. Dun, dun, dun. This is our speed round, our bonus round, the round where we see who you really are. Are you ready? Sure. Right. Um, excluding yourself, greatest wrestler of all time. Fuck. Uh, John Cena. Who's the worst wrestler of all time? Fucking TJ Black. <laughs> you can still find it from BPW. <laughs> Your main eventing uh, WrestleMania for the World Championship. Who is your opponent? Oof, fuck. Uh, Cody Rhodes. 
If you could come out to anyone's entrance music, past or present, who would it be? Call from personality. Hmm. Finish the sentence. K Fabe is. Come again. Finish. Uh, finish the sentence. K Fabe is. No, I can't. Sorry, I can't hear the question very well. Oh, um. Uh, uh, finish the sentence. K. A sen K. Fabe is. No clue, man. <laughs> okay. You can pass on. So, yeah. you, you know when they say K. Fabe is dead? When I no. say K. Fabe, what is your interpretation? What is the is? What comes after is? What is J. say? Uh huh? What is the first for the, what is the, 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 the noun for that? I can't hear very well. Okay, um, uh, oh. so, okay, fair enough, we'll, we'll pass with that one. Thank you. <laughs> um, squash, vegetable or fruit? A squash, vegetable. It, it's a fruit. Really? Yeah. Huh. It, uh, tomato logic, it has seeds. Well, okay then. <laughs> <laughs> New Japan wrestler Tai Chi. His ring gear gets smaller every year, revealing more of himself to the world. My question, what is the appropriate trunks to butt cheek ratio for ring gear? Trunk to butt cheek ratio? Yes. How much How do you butt cheeks are you? That? Zero. I don't like showing private stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so full coverage. Zero. <laughs> yeah, full coverage. Full coverage, okay. And the last question, the main event. The thing everybody wants to know. Have you ever talked to anybody, a stranger, in a supermarket about Darby Allen? Darby Allen? Yes. Nah. It's not that popular here. <laughs> and that's the correct answer. <laughs> And that will conclude this interview. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this with me. Thank you. Thank you for spending time and minding my my lack of language. It's and noise, background noises. It's absolutely no problem. I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. Um, it always fascinates me when... I get to talk to somebody from a different country, especially somebody that has brought pro wrestling to their country. You want to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And, and it's crazy how we came into contact because of this crazy thing that we both love that's called pro wrestling. Yeah, man. One thing I does not regret is all the people I meet. Oh, yeah. And uh, once again, where can we find all things uh, Sid Wen and um, uh, Vietnamese pro wrestling on social media? Okay. Everything about Vietnamese, uh, Vietnam pro wrestling is on Facebook. Look into that. If you have Facebook, look on Facebook, Instagram, uh, my name also on Facebook and Instagram. On YouTube as well, but it's not that prevalent. We only post highlights now. So if you want full matches, look for the live streams. It's still on YouTube. Uh, no, no, still on fucking Facebook. Okay. 
Um, and you don't have to even type it into your Google machine. All of the links to all his social media and Vietnamese pro wrestling will be in um, the description of the video below both on YouTube and Chatspot. Simply click the link, a new tab will appear on whatever device you're on. You have no excuse. Give them a damn follow. Well, thank you. Alright, uh, thank you for listening. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, put on YouTube and Castbox. This was sponsored by Live Energy and Paradigm Coffee. Join us next Tuesday and Wednesday for new incredible interviews. Uh, follow the show at Wrestling with uh, at Wrestling with E for on it, Twitter and Instagram for information on who we're interviewing, when we're interviewing them, links to those interviews, and so much more. Follow me personally at JamesJ993. Alright, uh, Sid, when I say Wrestling with, you say entertainment, okay? Okay, sure. For always special guest Sid when Calico Yacht, Scooter Dust, I'm James J, and this has been Wrestling With Entertainment. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys, we appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.